Bye bye, Fede. You're great as usual. Uh, hey guys, welcome to Let's Get Tropical. Uh, my name is uh, Georgi Radev. I am a uh, uh, founder of one really cool tiki bar in London called Lucky Kane. And I'm so uh, happy today that we've got this guy right there, uh, Oreo, which is a very, very good friend of mine. He loves tiki. Uh, he loves tiki cocktails. He travels around the world tiki, uh, teaching people about tiki. He's like the tiki beast going and giving that tiki love. Everyone in Spain loves him. Everyone uh, that speaks Spanish listens to him all the time. I've tried to do that, but unfortunately I don't speak Spanish, so uh, I couldn't hear all these uh, master classes. But uh, I'm so happy that you are here and you're going to teach us all uh, about cocktails and We've got this beautiful lady on the left as well that she's going to introduce herself now. Hi, guys. Um, Jupiter here. I am very excited to be with these wonderful boys, men, whatever you want to call them, depending on the day. Um, we are coming live to you, of course, from Zavi as well as YouTube. So um, if you guys have any questions or comments or if you're watching us on Facebook, we won't be able to see them on Facebook. So we definitely invite you to join us on Zavi.co. Um, we have a chat box down below as well as the ask the questions. Um, if you ask a question, it will be queued in which we will address all of those at the ending. So without further ado, of course, we have Mr. Oreo with us. Um, he is a fantastic guest. Uh, many of us have worked with him and seen him around the world. So it's always great to see him. Um, and of course, because we are streaming, there may be a delay that you are experiencing, but that's just kind of a natural thing that happens. So we will try and get to your questions and everything like that in time. So without further ado, I pass it on to Oreo. Is your turn, my friend? <laughs> problems. Uh, he's experiencing connecting issues, which we've had all day, unfortunately. Are you Man, there? Everything is low here. I can hear you. <laughs> that's because that's no, because you're no, in Spain. I can hear you. It's everything is low right now. <laughs> it's okay. You can go for it. Aloha. Aloha to everybody. My Wi-Fi connection, Wi-Fi, sorry, Wi-Fi connection is a bit right now. And uh, Guys, I can hear you. Um, I can hear you more or less, but uh, it's my pleasure to be part of uh, Let's Get Tropical channel tonight with you, and uh, that give me give my sorry uh, so many months without speaking English, and it's my my pleasure that you give me that opportunity to me to explain a bit uh, about my way to explain tiki cocktails because a lot of people can teach others to about tiki cocktails, but it will be on my way. And uh, I'm happy to be here. I saw that uh, some friends are connecting, like Brother Cliff, Scott friends. I know that Mary King will be here and other people. And I only want to say hi to all of them, also to the people that I never meet. But uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So if you prefer, you can speak in Spanish. Uh <laughs> I love hearing you speaking in Spanish, but I won't understand anything. <laughs> Man, <laughs> just pictures. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah I, I fully agree with you, my friend. <laughs> George, I cannot hear you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. Oh shit. Do I you want to jump, <laughs> Oreo? Do you, can you hear me? Do you want to jump and try? Okay. And you can reload. Oreo, do you hear me now? I can't hear you properly. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Now, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean you can you can start if you want uh, with uh, your presentation audio because everyone else is hearing you, and then hopefully uh, uh, later on you hear us better and uh, we can have some uh, uh, questions. Is that okay? Okay, uh, if everybody if everybody is hearing me well and you can see me well, it's okay. Uh, but Georgie, it was all your voice good at all time. Then I can I can start uh, right here and. Uh, try if later the connection will be better okay uh tonight uh, my master class uh, will be a bit well master class speech i'm gonna talk a lot it's uh what i call the craft of tiki cocktails because it's a bit it's a kind of introduction about uh, tiki cocktails 
uh, understand what a tiki cocktail is, and uh, then um, give some of my tips and tricks to prepare uh, tiki cocktails. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, we could see that uh, for me, the most important thing is understand what's tiki inside the cocktail world. Okay, because at least uh, I know that in the United States is something more common uh, understanding what a tea cocktail is, but in uh, Spain or some parts of Europe, the people doesn't have really idea about what is a tea cocktail. In in Spain, for example, we have a culture that came from the 70s about the Hawaiian and Polynesian bars. Then we have amazing bars from the 70s, the old ones. In Barcelona, for example, we have three. We have Aloha, Caja, and Cajiki from 71, 76, and 77 that are beautiful spaces with a, a beautiful decor, but all served, all the cocktails served in the tiki, Spanish tiki mac, like this one. Uh, but the cocktails are bullshit, OK? It was crappy cocktails. And in Spain, for example, the people think that a tiki cocktail is this a sweet cocktail, a cocktail with milk, a cocktail with whatever inside, all mixed in the same blender without cleaning that. And for the people, uh, tiki is the Hawaiian cocktail, the Polynesian cocktail, but they don't know more than this. They think that uh, tiki cocktail is a sweet cocktail, a cocktail with um, low quality spirits, a cocktail inside a tiki mac, a cocktail with an umbrella, a cocktail with a smoke, Lots of smoke because in, in Spain it's very difficult to use lots of, uh, of um, dry ice uh, for garnish. And uh, but the people doesn't know what's a tiki cocktail, okay? And uh, then the first thing that I love to explain the people is that okay, a tiki a tiki cocktail can have influence about uh, Hawaiian Polynesian cultures, and also the names of the cocktails sometimes came of the of the legends of that uh, of that uh, mythologies of these countries and the traditions but really a tiki cocktail has nothing related to hawaii or with polynesia uh, tiki cocktails are invented in the united states in the 30s and uh, i always tell that as everything in the life are invented by americans uh tiki cocktails born with the need of uh of evasion it was a social, economical, historical movement in the United States that the people has problems and the people needs to evade from reality. And then Tiki Bar is the place where you can go have a drink and feel that you are in a relaxed beach with a wahini like the one in the slide, bringing you a cocktail served inside a coconut with some smoke, with a tropical flavor with strong rums on it. And it they didn't give you the chance to think about if you can pay your mortgage, if your boss wants to fire you, if your wife wants to divorce from you. And it's the moment that you are thinking that you live in paradise. That's sticky. All the people uh, explain that a sticky cocktail is paradise inside a glass. That And also phrases... Uh, uh, have sense like uh, tiki is about escapism or tiki is about the cult of evasion. And everything related to a tiki cocktail is evasion. Then the tiki cocktail is only the 50% of the experience. The other part of the experience is the decoration, is the service, is the history. It's all that goes around on the tiki cocktail and you are paying for the experience, not for the cocktail. Then the other point that I want to talk here is that uh, about uh, the people has mess in the mind uh, between uh, tropical cocktails and tiki cocktails because some tropical cocktails appear on tiki minus. But really a tiki cocktail, uh, if we go to the most purest uh, part of the concept, it's a, a tiki cocktail is a cocktail created inside a tiki bar. And a tiki bar is a bar that has uh, tikis inside and has a determinated decor inside. Then, uh, in some of these menu appears cocktail like uh, Suffering Bastard, Painkiller, Singapore Sling, Piña Colada. And these are tropical cocktails, but because a simple reason, if you think on Singapore Sling, you can feel it's not a tiki cocktail. Because the first thing that I told you is tiki cocktails are created, uh, was created on uh, the 30s in the United States. And for example, Singapore Sling was created in 1915 in the Hotel Raffles from Singapore. We are talking. 
about 15 years before Tiki was born, well, 18 years. And in another part of the world, it's Singapore. It's not, uh, it's Asia. It's not United States. It's a, could be a pre-Tiki cocktail. Also, Piña Colada in Puerto Rico. It's a cocktail from the 1954, made with uh, Ramon Monchito Marrero in the Caribbean Hilton. And this cocktail arrives to the United States in the boom of that drink on the 70s. And on the 70s, the Tiki was in decadence. And I always recommend the people that, okay, uh, a tiki cocktail is a part of the tropical cocktails. Yes, tiki cocktails are a part of the tropical cocktails. But tropical cocktails are bigger. All the tiki, all the tiki cocktails could be tropical, but not all the tropicals could be tiki. And I always recommend the people uh, to think about the origin of the cocktail, and then the origin of the cocktail will explain what that cocktail is. If we go to next slide, okay. Uh, I want to. I love to make this because it's for me. That slide, it's uh, to explain Tiki history in two minutes. Okay, <laughs> it's 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 very easy. It's very okay, visual <laughs> because there is there is some some important eras in Tiki. Uh, we have the birth of Tiki in two parts. We have on the thirties we have the Don the Beach Comber. It was the real creator of the concept and the Tiki cocktail, the Ram Rhapsody exotic cocktails. And uh, in the forties appears another of the fathers of Tiki. It's Trader Vic that he's not the real creator, but he was the, the one that make a good business about Tiki. Then, uh, after uh, Second World War, 50s, 60s, uh, golden era was the, the expansion of Tiki in the United States. Uh, here, uh, I always symbolize that with uh, the image of, uh, of a Stephen Crane. Uh, but there is other people in that uh, important bartenders like Ray Buchen or Mariano Licudine from Tiki Tia Maikai. And uh, after that, after the boom, the decadence with the uh, Vietnam War arrives and also the, the culture of Cusco arrives, it was the fall of Chiqui in the 70s, 80s. It was the decadence. But for me, it's, it was not only the decadence from Chiqui cocktails, it was the decadence on the cocktails in general. After that, uh, always the, the popular culture recycles over itself. And at the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, some people start doing things. People like uh, Otto von Stroheim, people like Bosco Hernak, people like uh, Sven Kirsten. But it was called, these people was called Tiki Reviva, Revivalists. It's the people that were making the Tiki Revival, recovering all the lost things and bring it at the point that they have to, to, to stay at the level, at the good level. And for me on the Tiki Revival, on cocktails, the most important person is Jeff, is Jeff Beach Boomberry, the one that threw his books, recovered all the lost recipes, all the lost ingredients, and bring it to us. And after that, also, the, the best moment, I think it was Sipping Safari, creates a kind of, uh, of uh, revival on Tiki, and all the bars started uh, making the, the creations of, of Sipping Safari in his menu. And, uh, after that, I think it was like uh, 2005, uh, 2010, depending. Uh, more or less, it was the creation of the modern tiki. And for me, in the United States, somebody uh, important that uh, is behind a lot of the best modern bars is Martin Cage. Of course, there is a lot of people in the modern tiki part in Europe, like Georgie, or, or uh, in the United States. Uh, but for me, the most important is uh, it's Martin Kate because he's behind lots of very good projects. And also he makes an amazing book where you can learn a lot of Tiki. I love to explain that part very easy because uh, I always recommend the people to read the books of Jeff and the book of Martin and learn about that history on the books, okay? Of course, if I have eight hours, to explain that, I can explain everything, but uh, when I have uh, 30, 40 minutes, I go easy on that part. If we go to the next slide, I'm going to, to go a pass before the tiki begins, to the origin, to the traditional Caribbean cocktails. Is that the thing that I called uh, pre-tiki, uh, because uh, it was the source from the where the tiki grows. And uh, for me, the most important part is to understand that the traditional Caribbean cocktails are made with three ingredients, rum, lime, and sugar. 
And um, I always I always tell if I explain that to my mother, I can I can show her a variety of cocktails. For example, I could explain her. Okay, if we go to Cuba, what's the cocktail with rum, lime, and sugar? The traditional cocktail. It was a daiquiri, Cuban rum, lime, and sugar. If we go to Martinique, the traditional cocktail is tipanches, Martinique rum, lime, and sugar. If we go to Jamaica, the plant either the planter sponge. It's Jamaican rum, lime, sugar. If you want, you can also put some angostura on it. You know, but there's some bitters. But it's basically rum, lime, and sugar. And my mother, the first thing that she's gonna tell is that okay, they are smart. They make the same cocktail, but they change the name and they have a new one. And I always tell her, no, they don't change the name. They change the rum. And the point is that every country uh, make different rums because they use different raw materials and uh, with different fermentation, different distillation process, different aging processes. And at last, every single rum is dramatically different from Cuba to Jamaica to Martinique. Also, if we make a, a tasting of, blind tasting of three glasses with white rums, Cuba, Martinique, and uh, Jamaica, the color is the same, the appearance is the same. But when we smell that, when we taste that, are totally different between them. And if you use this on the same pattern of cocktail, you change the cocktail. That's the point where the uh, tiki uh, starts, is the understanding of the difference on rum. If we go to the next slide, uh, we can find the definition of the tiki cocktail. And the definition of the tiki cocktail, for me, okay, it's it's nice, the thing that I told you before, that, uh, okay, a tiki cocktail is a, bar, it's a cocktail made inside a tiki bar with a role in the in the immersive Polynesian space. But for me, a tiki cocktail has a structure, and it's very important to have this structure. And this definition of tiki cocktail, for me, is the best one. And it's the one made by Don David Comber, the creator of that concept. And in this phrase, he explains everything. And this phrase is an elaboration of the traditional planter sponge formula, balancing sour, sweet, strong, weak, and spice components. At this point, he's explaining that the recipe is an elaboration of a traditional cocktail, recipe of a cocktail that is the planter sponge, because Don David Comber was uh, focused and uh, falls in love on his travels when he was young uh, to Jamaica with the planter sponge. And the traditional recipe for the planter sponge was one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak. And he takes all these components, sour, sweet, strong, weak, and adds the spice. Five components, okay? is the things that a tiki cocktail needs. But the most important phrase here, uh, word in that phrase, sorry, it's balancing. Because a tiki cocktail, if it's something, it's something balanced. Then when somebody come to me and tell me, oh, I don't like tiki cocktails because they're too sweet. No, man, you are drinking a shitty cocktail, not a tiki cocktail. Because a tiki cocktail needs to be balanced. It needs to have sour, point of sweet, rum, some dilution that it's neat, and spices, OK? If we go to the next slide, I'm going to talk about that definition, OK? But uh, more like a structure, talking about elements. You have, we have five elements then. For me, a tiki cocktail needs that five elements. The first one was the sour. Traditionally, the sour was the lime. And on the beach comber, when we're creating the cocktails, start thinking, why I can't use only lime if I have other uh, sour elements like, um, like grapefruit juice, like orange juice, or I can mix that. I can mix lime with orange. I can mix... Uh, lime with grapefruit, lime, orange, grapefruit, and create more layers of flavors about sour. Then in the sweet was the same. The traditional was the sugar, but there is other elements. There is agave, there is honey, there is um, maple syrup. You can infuse syrups with, uh, with flavors, uh, with fruits, like uh, passion fruit, like grenadine. You can mix grenadine with honey and create more layers of flavor on the sweet. On the strong, on the strong, the defi clear definition is what one ram can do, three rams can. Don the Beachcomber was a master blender. He was blending different rams from different bodies, different uh, raw materials, and creating a 
an exceptional and unique rum for each cocktail. And the people can reproduce that. On the week, the dilution of the cocktail, it needs because it helps to balance, to chill. He was using um, shaved ice. He used the blender also to chill, dilute, and aerate the drink. And uh, also in the week part, I love to, to introduce things that works very well on Blender. Uh, and also use um, helps to, to, to dilute the drink, like uh, pineapple juice or soda, because you put that on the Blender, and it gives texture to the cocktail. It makes foams, and it's amazing. And the last element uh, for me is the signature on the cocktails of Don David's Convert is the spice, the use of pimento drum, palernum, angostura bitters, pernod, uh, great uh, spices over the cocktails. And the spicy note, and it is for me, it's the signature and very important uh, part on the cocktails of Don David's Convert, exotic cocktails or the tiki cocktails. And if you go to the next slide, we will see another part of the history. Uh, as I told you, uh, Don David Scomber was uh, influenced by the planter sponge, but Trader Vic was influenced by the cocktails of Don David Scomber with reverse engineering, and also uh, was influenced for his trips to the Caribbean, to Cuba, uh, from the daiquiri. He would fall in love uh, because of Constante Rivalaiwa in Floridita. And then on Trader Vic's uh, pattern, you could find the structure of the daiquiri, a sour, sweet, strong, quick, Without the spices, it's more or less the kind of uh, daiquiri cocktails converted in uh, in long drinks, for example, the Mai Tai. But we can also find uh, other cocktails with the sour, with the strong, with the spice uh, that are cocktails influenced from Don David Scomber. And you can think that it's reverse engineered cocktails from directly from the cocktails of Don David Scomber. On Trader Rigs, we could find both patterns. But for me, the most important is the previous, uh, the sour, sweet, strong wheat. It's the point to start about tiki cocktail. If we go to the next slide, uh, we could think about uh, flavors in tiki, flavors in tiki. The most common flavors that a tiki cocktail has, for sure, the rum. After that, we could find liquors, syrups, bitter, citrus, because the citrus is a very important part, as I told you before, the part of sour. As we could find different tropical fruits, spices, and other spirits, because Don David Scomber used to work always with rum, but Trader Vic incorporate uh, the use of other spirits alone or mix it with uh, with rum, because he was a smart. He was looking for to make business, and uh, if you have in your bar people that are not drinking other spirits and you only are drinking other spirits and you serve only rum, they may become once or two. You know, but they didn't come every week. And if you have cocktails with lots of different spirits, you will have more customers that are becoming patrons com com coming every week. Okay. Then, talking also uh, about flavors in tiki, if we go to the next slide, we could see the evolution of flavors in tiki. If we come, it's also the same thing I explained you with the pictures of Tom the Beach Comber, uh, Stephen Crane, and all the people, but in flavors. We, we can start from the left, from the traditional Caribbean cocktails, where we could find the rum, lime, sugar, and then go to the right. Tom the Beach Comber on the 30s, he uses multiple rums, mix of citrus, flavored syrups, spices, and the blender. Then go to Trader Vic's, as I told you, he mixes uh, rum and spirits, and also introduced the orget. Orget, as I told you, in Don de Vichcomber, Don de Vichcomber, the signature ingredient was the spices, and Trader Vic, one of the signature ingredients was the orget, a French almond liquor. Then, in the golden era, 50s and 60s, plus added to the previous things, uh, they appear more uh, tropical fruits like tangerines, guavas, lychees, guanabanas, everything because they have more communication uh, for transport and better networks from transport. Uh, it also appears the blue curacao, I hate it, but it appears and uh, it was popular, the blue cocktails, but for me it's... And uh, also the boom of, uh, of piña colada